Let's take a look at introduction to problem solving, direct translation problems, word problems basically. And let's look at our first one. It says the sum of five and twice a number. The sum of five and twice a number. is 35. Well, not all of them are as simple as this one where you can just uh, write it out here and then interpret what the words mean, but this one is. <coughs> your is, is there equals in a word problem, and 35 is to the right of the is, so I put 35 to the right of the equals. Now over here, we got the word sum. Now what goes along with sum is like you say, find the sum of this and this. So the end is our connector. And that's where our plus is going to be. So this is our plus. And then what's before the end is a 5. So put 5 there. Now twice a number. Well, that would, uh, number is like a variable. So you said equal to something. If they don't say which, they don't say a letter here, we'll just use x. And twice it would be 2x. Now that's our setup. And now we want to solve it. Well, this is a linear equation, so we go through our steps for that. Uh, first step, get rid of parentheses. Uh, don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Third step, get everything with a number on one side, uh, or get everything with an x on one side, and numbers on the other side. So I take 5 over to the right side. Remember, you take anything across your equals, the sign changes, so my 5 becomes a negative 5. Combine together numbers at any step. 35 minus 5 gives us 30. And last step, divide both sides by the number in front of your x, which is a 2. You do that, those 2's cancel. And 30 divided by 2 is 15. So that would be your answer. Let's take a look at the next one. It says the sum of four consecutive odd integers odd integers. That's like 3, 5, 7, 9, so forth. Uh, consecutive means they're one after the other. It'd be like 3, 5, 7, 9. So, um, so let's see, this is our first odd. And then we'll have our second odd. And then we'll have our third odd. And lastly, we'll have our fourth odd. Now our first odd, we don't know what it is, so let's just say it's x. Now let's pretend um, that these numbers are 3, 5, 7, and 9. They're not, but let's pretend they are. So this is our first odd. Now if you take a look at this 3, going to the 5, you ask, what did I add to get to that? Well, we added 2. So going from this first odd here to the second one, we'll also add 2. Now going from the 3 to the 7, you think, okay, what did I add here? Well, I added 4. So going from the first here to the third one here, we'll add 4. So we'll start with x, and we're adding 4 to it. Then the last one here, going from the 3, going down to the 9, we ask what we added, and we added 6. So going from our first one here to our last one, we're going to add 6. So this would be x plus 6. Now sometimes, I'll put simple number, number examples uh, down here. They have nothing to do with the problem. They help me with the setup on it. Now this says that the sum of those is 48, which means this plus this plus this plus this is 48. So we got x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4 plus x plus 6 is equal to 48. Well, those parentheses really aren't doing anything, so I can um, I can drop them. Combine together like terms. We got x plus x plus x plus x. That's four x's. Two plus four is six. Plus another six is twelve. Equals forty-eight. Ah. There you go. 
Okay, so we're going to take the 12 over to the right side, and you know, get rid of parentheses, get rid of fractions, there's none of those. Get everything with an X on one side and numbers on the other. When I take 12 over, it becomes a negative 12. Combine together numbers in any step, 48 minus 12 gives us 36. And our last step is to divide both sides by a number in front of your X, which is a 4. And to do that, these 4 is going to cancel. And we've got x is equal to 9. Well, that means our first odd is 9. And if these are consecutive odd integers, this has to be 11, 13, and 15. So those would be our, our answers. Well, let's look at the next one. Okay. Total of 50,000 is to be divided between John and Bill. John has received 8,000 less than Bill. How much will each receive? John and Bill. Okay. Um, let's see. If the total of 50,000 be divided among them, John has received 8,000 less than Bill. So the amount John is going to get is being put in reference to Bill. So John is being put in reference to Bill. Now, if you got one one of your items being put in reference to the other, whatever we're talking about, names or numbers or whatever, uh, the one that's being put in reference to will always be your X. So that's X. John is to receive eight thousand dollars less than than Bill. Well, um, we take this and we subtract eight thousand. Again, if you need to see a simple number example. Um, you know, you plug in a number here, and you think, okay, 8,000 less, what did I do? But that one's pretty simple. You just subtract 8,000. <coughs> now, total these add up to 50,000. So this plus this should give us 50,000. So we got x minus 8,000 plus x is equal to 50,000. Well, combine together like terms. x plus x is 2x. Um, get everything with an X on one side, numbers on the other side. So I'll take negative 8,000 over here. And it becomes a positive 8,000. And that gives us 58,000. Last step, divide both sides by number in front of your X. So we'll divide both sides by 2. Those 2's cancel. And um, that gives us uh, twenty nine thousand, I believe. So that's the uh, amount Bill Bill gets. Now total it adds up to fifty thousand. So if this is twenty nine thousand and they add up to fifty thousand, then this has to be twenty one thousand. And those would be the amount Bill and John receive. Now let's look at our next example. We'll start a new page here. Okay. David and Sally have 50000 to invest. Their advisor recommended that they put some in stocks and some in bonds. His recommended amount in bonds should equal to one-third of the amount in stocks. How much should be invested in stocks? How much should be in bonds? Okay. So it looks like we're talking about stocks and bonds. Okay. He's recommended that the amount in bonds should equal to one third of the amount in stocks. The amount in bonds should equal one third of the amount in stocks. So bonds is being put in reference to stocks. So it's going that way, which means this has to be an X. Now the other one says, um, he's recommended the amount in bonds should equal one third of the amount in stocks. Well, if this is X, one third of that is one third X. <coughs> Excuse me. And total of these add up to 50,000. So I got x plus one third x is equal to 50,000. And now we solve this. Uh, first step, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Uh, we do have a fraction. Multiply everything by the LCM of all our denominators, which is 3. So multiply everything by 3.
And we do that, we got 3x here, plus those threes cancel, and we got x, and uh, that gives us four zeros, four zeros, 15. Okay, so what is that, 150,000? Yeah. So we got 3x plus x is 4x. Combine together like terms at any step. Now we're down to step four. Um, there's no other steps necessary. Uh, last step, divide both sides by the number in front of your x. So we're going to divide both sides by four. And we're going to do that. Those cancel. And um, Let me do this on the calculator. <laughs> I'm going to mess it up. Okay, so what is this? 150,000. Four zeros divided by four. 37,500. I was right along the right track. I should have just kept going. Now that's X, so that's going to be the amount we put into stocks. Well, if there's a total of 50,000, then we take 50,000 minus that. So 50,000 minus 37,500. 37, that gives us 12,500. So that's the amount that goes in stocks. And that would be your answer. Okay, let's look at the next one. <clears throat> so David went shopping. His shirt cost eight dollars less than a pair of pants, and his shoes cost ten dollars more than the pants. Find cost of all items of total blue of sixty-two. So we got a shirt. Looks like looks like we got pants. What else do we have? Shoes. Okay. Um, his shirt costs eight dollars less than a pair of pants. So the shirt is being put in reference to the pants. So shirt is being put in reference to the pants. And his shoes cost ten dollars more than the pants. So the shoes are being put in reference to the pants. Well, these are both being put in reference to the pants, so the pants have to be X. Okay, let's go back to our shirt. His shirt costs eight dollars less than a pair of pants. Well, if this is x, eight dollars less will be x minus eight. Um, his shoes cost ten dollars more than the pants. Well, if his pants cost this, ten dollars more will be x plus ten. And total these add up to uh, sixty-two dollars. So we're going to take x minus eight plus x plus x plus ten equals sixty-two. Well, combine to get like terms. X plus X plus X is 3X. Negative 8 plus 10 is 2. Uh, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Get rid of fractions, don't have any. Get everything with an X on one side, numbers on the other side. So I'll take 2 over. And we've got 3X is equal to 62 minus 2. Combine to get the numbers in any step. 62 minus 2 is 60. Last step, divide both sides by the number in front of your x. Well, the number in front of your x is a 3. So we'll divide both sides by 3. And those 3's cancel. And 60 divided by 3 is 20. So that means the pants cost $20. Shirt dollar, shirts, the shirt is $8 less, so that'd be $12. 20 minus 8. The shoes are $10 more. 20 plus 10 is 30. And those would be our values for all those. They may not ask for all of them. Find the cost of all items. Yep, we just found the cost of all three items. Let's look at this next one. In comparing cell phone companies, company ABC charges $10 per month plus 20 cents per minute, while company XYZ charges 25 cents per minute with no monthly service charge. For how many minutes will the monthly cost be the same? So cost of the ABC plan 
is equal to the cost of the XYZ plan. That's what they're asking. When are the costs going to be the same? Well, ABC charges $10 per month. So no matter what, they charge $10 per month. Plus 20 cents per minute. So if you got 60 minutes, it'd be 60 times 20 cents. If you got 100 minutes, it'd be 100 times 20, 20 cents. So this is going to be 0 0.20 times X. X is the number of minutes. Then on this other side, it says, well, company XYZ charges 25 cents per minute. Well, this is just going to be 0.25x. So that's our setup on that. Um, first step, get rid of parentheses, don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions, don't have any. Third step, get everything with a number on one side, uh, everything with an x on the other. Need to quit watching TV while I make these. <laughs> Taken's on, uh, and I... What little I've washed, I, I have no clue what's going on. And, I'm trying to guess from no volume. Okay, so I take the 0.20x over the right side becomes negative 0.20x. Combine together like terms in any step. I'm not very good with decimals. I think that's 0.05x, but let me double check. 0.25 minus 0.20. Yeah, 0.05. I really just stink at fraction decimals. Okay, our last step, divide both sides by a number in front of your um in front of your x. So we'll divide both sides by 0 0.05. And then do that, those 0 0.05s will cancel there. And move two places, move two places here. I think that's 200, but let me see. 10 divided by 0 0.05. 200. So that would be how many minutes um, before when they'd be exactly the same, the two plans. And that's actually the end of that, that section. Let's come back to here. And I'll end the movie.